Hi, Jim Hebel with Bedecker Plastics, and I'm here with another brief technical talk highlighting the material properties of advanced polymers. Today, I want to shed a little light about the heat deflection temperature, or the HDT, of an engineered thermoplastic. In a previous video, I covered the continuous use temperature. I explained that continuous use temperature is more of a long-term temperature. It's what is happening to my material over an extended period of time with temperature exposure. HDT, on the other hand, is related to the short term. Heat deflection temperature is what is happening to my material right now under load at temperature. The best way to explain HDT is to talk about the test method. The test method for heat deflection temperature is covered by ASTM D648. And the test method defines HDT as the temperature at which a half inch thick test bar will deflect by 10 thousandths of an inch when exposed to a constant load. Now, how do we define a constant load? For plastics, there are typically two loads that can be used by this test standard, 66 PSI or 264 PSI. The 66 pounds per square inch test load is typically used for softer materials like polyethylene, LDPE, HDPE, UHMW, even PTFE, typically your softer materials. The 264 PSI test load is used more commonly for materials like acetals, nylons, polyether imid, peak, even polycarbonate, materials that are a bit stronger and a bit stiffer. The way the test works is you have a half inch thick test bar and you take that half inch thick test bar and hold it on two ends. You then place the 264 PSI test load right in the center of the test bar and you maintain that constant load. Then you expose the environment of that test setup to a rise in temperature. As the temperature rises, the test bar with the load is monitored. The point at which the test bar deflects by 10 thousandths of an inch, well, at that temperature, that's your heat deflection temperature. So, in essence, you're finding out when the material is going to deform or deflect at temperature under a load. Now, there are other factors that can influence the HDT of a material. Factors such as fillers. Oftentimes glass or carbon fibers are added to a material. These fillers often provide strength and stiffness to the polymer. So a material with such fillers typically have, has a higher HDT compared to that of the base polymer. However, you can have a material with fillers like plasticizers or lubricants, which can actually soften the polymer. In this case, your HDT may be lower compared to the heat deflection temperature of the base polymer. Aside from HDT, there are also other factors that can influence a material's performance at temperature. The time of exposure at temperature can play a role, as can the rate of temperature change. Is the material exposed to a rapid increase in temperature? Or is it exposed to a slow, gradual increase in temperature? Part geometry or part design can also have an effect on a material's performance at temperature. Knowing the material's HDT is really important for a user. They need to know this to determine if their material will deform or deflect in their application depending on temperature. Beyond that, another tool that someone can use is the DMA curve, or the Dynamic Mechanical Analysis Curve. The DMA curve is a bit more complex. It gives one a fingerprint for the stiffness of the material across a range of temperatures. I'll cover the DMA curve in detail, including how to use it, in a future video, so stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments about HDT, please feel free to add them below and I'll try to address them for you. As always, thanks for watching.